In light of the recent Jonah Hill controversy and in following a request from a viewer, I decided to make a short video on loving without attachment. As recognized, Hill is engaging in a sort of therapy speak surrounding boundaries. This appears to come from a place of possessiveness. Why does possessiveness occur? Eric Fromm notes a sort of love that is developed in modernity. Love as teamwork, where everybody adjusts his behavior to the expressed needs of the other person in the pursuit of common aims. Modeled after the sort of groups you might encounter in an office space, there isn't anything apparently wrong in centering collaboration as the essence of a relationship. But this is a naive concept as it fails to account for why we end up in relationships to begin with. The neurotic lover, Fromm notes, is usually a man who wants to be loved while never having to actually love. This sort of childlike state encourages grandiose and romantic visions of their partner. They may feel so good about their partner that at first they will display a great deal of charm and affection, but there is a significant failure in seeing their partner as a human being with their own agency. When they realize that their partner cannot live up to their fantasy, their idea of gratification, the man may feel deeply hurt and pin his pain on the idea that his partner is selfish and does not love him. Pair this with Bell Hook's observation that romance is often depicted as a project, women are the architects and the planners. Namely, women are socialized early on to be the givers of love, to sacrifice their agency in the hopes of this collaborative project. Men are generally taught that love is this reward, this immediate and sustained high that is received passively, that is guaranteed for them if they achieve certain patriarchal standards. Any extra effort afterwards is taken as a failure on the part of their partner. Suddenly, this love as teamwork idea seems kinda lopsided. For men, this possessiveness is deeply tied to their identity. To be a man is to be loved by a woman, and to be loved is to have some sort of power over them. Boundaries, then, can be misused as forms of policing and correcting the ways in which their partner is supposed to love them. To back up from gender roles in general, this possessiveness is deeply tied to our own self-image. We do not feel secure in ourselves, and so we attempt to own and dominate another in order to regain some security. This sort of narcissism does not respect the agency of others and is motivated by one's own desire and fear. So long as we depend on another for our psychological well-being, intellectually or emotionally, that dependence must inevitably create fear from which arises sorrow, writes Krishnamurti. And furthermore, any alteration of these dependencies we violently oppose because we depend on them for psychological security. To love without attachment is above all else to get over oneself. In fact, Frum recognizes the overcoming of one's narcissism as the main condition for the achievement of love. In attempting to secure our own self-image through another, we create an image or fantasy of that other. We imprison them there through manipulation, deception, and control. This is our attempt to possess. And we also imprison ourselves in our own narcissism. We cut ourselves off from being able to experience true love. To abandon the present in order to look for things in the future is to throw away the substance and hold on to the shadow, writes Thich Nhat Hanh. What is true love? Firstly, love involves some level of objectivity. You need to see people for their own potentialities and your own potentialities, rather than the images you have of them. This, in itself, means abandoning one's self-prioritization. It involves humility, and this humility is informed by a significant faith that through recognizing, trusting, and nurturing you and your partner's potentialities, love will flourish. Yes, boundaries still exist in this state, but this comes about through education rather than manipulation. By telling them your boundaries, you hope that this will also teach you about them and their boundaries and needs, and they might not be compatible with yours. And here is the crucial and scary part about love without attachment. You must be vulnerable to the things you feared. That things might not last. That people die. That feelings change. All you can do is have some humility and faith that the learning process itself, which is reciprocal, will bring love to both. Notably, Krishnamurti argues that passion comes through learning rather than through desire or gratification. It is within this intense curiosity we have for the other where love emerges. And how could we truly know those who we supposedly love if we limit them for our own gratification? 
We must listen without judgment. We must love without attachment. True love is unconditional, writes Bell Hooks, but to truly flourish, it requires an ongoing commitment to constructive struggle and change. 